Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller with Expanding Security, and we're going to talk about getting into the course of the Linux Professional Certification Level 1. So I want to do a little intro of me and kind of how the course is set up before we actually like dig right in. So first off, we're going to talk exam, study, course process, how to build a lab. And I want you to build a lab, so you're going to have to take some time after these first couple of intro statements to uh, go out and get all the things that you need and bring them back together again. So, why should you listen to me? Well, I'm a penetration tester and a security expert. Um, I do a lot of work in security. Most of the tools that I need only come in a Linux variant. There is no Windows version of that tool, or the Windows tools are really as good as the Linux tools. Uh, security moves at a really, really fast pace, so the tools change and flex and bend and grow at a very fast pace, and the best way to do development in that is to actually do it on a Linux platform so you can actually control the code. Now, I'm sure that there's some people that would argue with me out there, but for us, for you and I, what's really important is, is that Linux is a great tool for me, and I have to use it on a regular basis, so I could convince you to use it and tell you all the things that I've run into as a person who uses Linux on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, we need to talk about how this course works best for you. You could just watch these videos, but you probably won't be a Linux professional at that point. You could just watch these videos and you probably won't pass your tests. And so I'm going to tell you how to pass your test in this because that's one of the components of what we do here. But you want to be a Linux professional. You want to understand how this operating system works. And this is exactly what we can do right here. So first what you're going to do is just generally is you're going to get the books. I'll talk about them. You're going to write flashcards. I'm going to talk about how those work. I have a nice big stack here that I actually use to study for my LPIC certification. You're going to build some virtual machines, and again, I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Now, two books out there that I really, really like for two different reasons. On the left-hand side, we have the LPIC, and it's an excellent book. This is a new version. I believe it started in 2013. There's about two or three previous versions to it. This is an excellent book for learning Linux because the explanations in it make sense. I mean... You have me here to make it make sense for you, but you know it might be that you need somebody else to explain it to you. So that's why I like the first book. The second book, the Nutshell book, I really love that one from a open this book up and actually do these activity standpoint. And most of the demonstrations that I'm going to use and do are going to come straight out of that book. So you could use these two books by themselves but together it makes it a lot easier for you. Now, there are a lot of other books out there, and here's a little picture of me with a little piece of my library, you know, and this is just the Linux library, not even the Linux security library. And these are the books that I've referred to over the years. I really do enjoy these books, and they work really well for me. There are plenty of others that are free out there. And that's the nice thing about Linux is, is it an open source operating system. So the people that are involved in it believe in the open source philosophy. So they write a lot of really cool books that you can go find for free. If you don't like the way somebody writes a book, if you don't like the way they speak to you, if you don't like the uh, forums that you're going to and you feel like they're a little smarmy or a little snooty, there's 10 other forums out there that are going to be nice and actually help you with what you're doing. I'll point out some of these as we go along, but it's up to you to reach out there and search through all the search engines and find the ones that work well for you. These happen to be a couple of the books. I happen to be an old school kind of guy. I like to pick up a book and actually read it, so these are some of the lit books that I have. Okay, let's talk flashcards here. You cannot pass this exam without knowing your commands cold your switches on each one of those commands cold and putting them in a context. So what you need to do is you need to, well, you need to get some flashcards. And these flashcards are my flashcards for the LPIC exam. I wrote them by hand. You've got to know the terms. You've got to know the concepts. You've got to know all of the commands well. Now, you want to do this by hand. A couple of my friends, 
they say, well, I can do this on my mobile device or, and I can carry that with me. There is something that happens in the brain when you actually sit there and do the activity of block lettering out that particular thing and then flipping it over and then writing the definition on the other side. Also, it's a pretty easy system. I can shove this in my back pocket. I can be anywhere with this. Nobody's going to stop me from doing this. It's nice, it's easy, it's efficient. Now, if you have children or are about to have children, you want to do this and you want to practice it with them. What I tell my students who do my long courses of 10 weeks long, I tell them to say, here, hand these to your child and get them to put them in the yes or no pile. And all they literally have to do is to, to say, okay, I'm going to hold them up for mommy or daddy and I'm going to say, do you know this one? And daddy's going to go, oh, put it over there. Do you know this one? And they go, yeah, I know that one. Okay, put it over there. And you get to play a little game with them because this is going to require a certain amount of really hard work for you to prepare this and your child is going to want to get your attention so this is a great way for you to interact with your child but also this is a great way for you to teach your child this is how to study this works well yes there's plenty of digital ways to do this I happen to like this physical tactile thing because we do so much digital stuff that I actually want to touch these particular cards and work with these particular cards because it fires off a whole other set of neuronal processes in the brain. So flashcards are a great tool and you want to practice these until you know I'm cold and I'll explain why in just a second. Okay let's talk about the certification itself. Where do you go? Well you go to the LPI.org, Linux Professional Institute. See the little symbol right there? Well that's because I actually have one of the certifications. There are two exams for that, not just one. You only want to go to the lpi.org and look there. There is something from CompTIA that's called the Linux Plus. There is something from SUSE that is also another certification. The nice thing about doing this through the LPI is you get the combination certification at this first level. That means that one two tests for one certification actually gets you three separate certifications, which is really, really nice. But that also means that you have to learn a little bit about the other operating systems that are out there. So let's talk about these exams. It's two exams. Now we're going to do this in one course because it fits together neatly and also the books are set up like that and it's generally a good group of information to put all into one course. There's two exams. There are 101 and 102. There are 10 topics that you have to understand. The first exam is 60 questions in 90 minutes and it's all multiple choice. The second one is 60 minutes, I mean 60 questions in 90 minutes, and it's 33% fill in the blank. You must get the syntax correct. That includes the fact that this is a case sensitive operating system, so you must know case sensitivity for particular commands. If you get lazy and you type them all in lowercase, and there's something like x86 free, and the x is capitalized, and the f is capitalized, and you don't do it right, you're done. You got that question wrong. You really can't afford that with 60 questions in 90 minutes. I'm a pretty fast exam taker in most cases. Usually I go about double the speed of most people. On my second exam, my 102 exam, I took about 45 minutes to complete that because I wanted to make sure that I get the syntax correct because I don't type very well. And we're going to talk about how you can get around some of those problems of not being able to type very well inside the operating system itself. So what's on exam 101? System architecture, Linux installation, the package managers that are out there, the basic commands, and also devices. Linux file system, file system hierarchy, the standard hierarchy that you are going to encounter with all the different variations of Linux should conform to what's called the file system hierarchy standard. Next on the 102 exam, we get into shell scripts, shell scripting, and data management. Now, we're not going to teach you to program, we're not going to teach you to perfectly script, we're going to teach you how to understand scripting and the basic components of it. This is a whole world in and of itself within the Linux community. We want to do lots and lots of automation for things that are very mundane and boring. When you have to 
create 100 users, you don't want to go through the user add command over and over and over again. What you want to do is you want to say, oh, I've got this list that was given to me from HR, and it's in comma separated values, and I'll write a script that will say, get the first person's name, bring it back, insert it in here, and do all the groups that they're supposed to be. I want this to be automated. And that's what scripts will allow you to do. Automate things for you personally, but also for your business and for your work. Then we're going to learn a little bit about the user interfaces and the desktops. Now, this is, well, at its heart, this is a command line operating system. So we need to understand the desktops for the end users. It may be that you deploy a desktop environment for all of your users and you do everything at the command line. It's nice because you can get to their machine and when you need to go to the command line, you can get right to it. But they really don't want to fool around with that, so they want the desktop environment because they're used to a mouse, they're used to clicking, and that's what they want. Then there's a bunch of administrative tasks that are, well, you know, it's the day-to-day -day stuff, like creating users, modifying users, deleting users, creating accounts, creating um, any one of the tools that you're going to need. Those administrative tasks have to be discussed in a very, very light way. Next, we talk about the system services and how to get those system services up and running. How does an email server work from its core understanding? How does DNS work from its core understanding? We're not going to make you a DNS expert, and the LPIC level one isn't going to expect you to be an expert. But you have to know that DNS takes a fully qualified domain name and resolves it to an IP address, and how to do it and where it gets done. In the upper level exams, level two and level three, you must be able to implement these servers and fix these servers on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you don't have these core fundamentals down, you're toast when it comes to the next level of exams. Networking fundamentals. I'm going to talk a lot about IP4, not a lot about IPv6, but we need to be prepared for it because it is slowly rolling into our environment and we need to be ready. This will give us just a little tiny primer on that. And finally, my favorite section of this is the security section. This is what I do for a living. So how do I secure this operating system for me? How do I secure it for you? And how do you get ready for the exam? Now, you're going to see me do a lot of demonstrations. I want you to start your virtual machines. I want you to listen to what I had to say and quickly pause and toggle over if you're on a Windows machine, Alt tab over to the other screen and do that activity. Or watch my videos, watch my explanation, watch my demonstration, and then stop. And then I want you to pull out that book. If it's the nutshell book that you're using, pull out the nutshell book and actually walk through each one of those commands and make sure it works. Now, the really frustrating thing is going to happen that your implementation isn't going to be exactly the way it was in the book. This is not a point and click operating system. This is not a one way to do things operating system and the operating system is continually evolving. So the instruction that was printed a year ago may not work because it's a different operating system but also because it's a newer version of the operating system and you need to be prepared for that. And I think that that frustration will soon melt away if you pay attention to the basics and you really work with the tool. And what I tell people to do is Put the other operating system away. I know you like it. I know you want to do it that way. Use this operating system and be forced into using it. It's just like when you're thrust into another country and you don't have a translator, you learn the language really fast. That's what we're doing here. In this next section, what we're going to do is we're going to build a lab. And we'll talk about that next.